Pacman was born in 1991, 27 years after the most important modern civil rights acts, are estimated to have a 29% chance of imprisonment, more than seven times that of whites born in the same year. Latino men are incarcerated at four times the white male rate. In 2004, 228 years after the Declaration of Independence found all men to have been created equal, blacks and Latinos suffered poverty rates nearly three times that of the white majority population. Nearly one in three of their children lived in poverty as against one in 10 white children. In 2006, 52 years after Brown versus Board of Education had proclaimed segregated educational establishments to be unequal, all these things that we think might be kind of eroding race and getting rid of race. In 2006, half a century after Brown versus Board, black students constituted 2.2% of the entering first year students at University of California at Los Angeles. Of that tiny number admitted, one-fifth were scholarship athletes. Um, in 2003, 79 years after the passage of the Indian Citizenship Act, joblessness among Native Americans tripled that of whites. In 1998, as the United States celebrated the 135th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, the net worth of African Americans and Hispanic families in the United States was 17% that of non-Hispanic whites today. As we speak today, it's about 10%. And it's about 10% because the subprime mortgage crisis hit so hard uh, into uh, communities of, of color. Um, as I write these words, 75% of all active tuberculosis cases, disease of the poor, in the United States afflict people of color. As Illinois prepares to celebrate a bicentennial of African American emancipation around the birthday of Abraham Lincoln, that's the only way they could figure out how to do it, uh, a majority of its HIV AIDS cases occur among African Americans. So, you know, you could, you could think about that uh, set of, of facts and you could update them. Uh, I gave you the update on wealth. There's a wonderful study from 10 days ago by the American Association of Retired Persons that actually looks at, the, at, at black people around my age in their 50s and 60s and tries to, to uh, think about their life prospects. And we hear so much about the crisis of black uh, and Latino youth, but the AARP shows that the crisis of the not only the black elderly, but the people who ought to be in the prime of their careers in many ways is equally acute and that they uh, suffer stress-related illness, suffer lack of health care, suffer eviction, suffer foreclosure at rates two to three times uh, whites of their age group. So this kind of persistent inequality is something that continues to mark um, U.S. society and in many ways to, to not be very easily talked about uh, and to not be very easily talked about um, even uh, in the case of the Obama run for the presidency. And I think the foreclosure crisis, the as a prime mortgage crisis, is a tremendously important uh, marker of this because none of the Democratic campaigners talked about this racial disparity in uh, home losses uh, at the time. And that didn't keep race from coming up, race and foreclosure from coming up, but instead it ensured that it would only come up when right wingers raised it. And they raised it not in terms of the historic inequalities in race and lending and in uh, segregated housing patterns uh, in the United States, but rather in terms of some wild uh, supposed conspiracy of liberal lenders to somehow try to give uh, people of color a break in extending uh, mortgages. And we're kind of able in certain uh, Tea Party kind of situations to suggest that the problem with the economy was actually caused by people getting houses that they didn't deserve and that they hadn't worked uh, to get. So I think, you know, we, we pay a great cost in trying to, to avoid talking about racial inequality. We end up being unable sometimes to talk about inequality in general and to talk about crisis in general. Bonnie Guineer and Jerry Tortoise have a, a, a very fine book called The Miner's Canary in which they argue that people of color uh, experience 
things first and worst that are actually maladies of the whole society or that are becoming maladies of the whole society. And I think this is a, a tremendously apt way to think about the, the housing crisis. Um, and then 